This is the best episode so far because it's episode eight and you guys all know how I feel about the number eight. We are gonna talk a little bit about high fat diets and how to make sure that you're digesting fats correctly. We're gonna talk about traveling and staying motivated while you're traveling, especially over the holiday season. And then we are gonna talk about pasta alternatives. So kind of a little bit of everything. But first, let me update you. I have still yet to have caffeine. This is a decaf Americano, which is very weird that I still order decaf, but I feel like it's more of like a traditional thing. Like I have to have something hot in the morning. And so I do a lot of teas, but I've been really good with my decaf Americanos. I wanted to tell you guys I've stuck with the no caffeine and it's been tough, but it's been good. And then Wade, if you watched last episode, um, his Nicorette obsession, he has officially gone a full week with no Nicorette. So if you are trying to break a habit, just try to stick for one week and usually you can start really seeing changes. It's the hardest week after that first week. So like when you do my 21 day superhero challenge, which is starting January 11th, if you make it past the first week and you don't cheat, usually you're going to finish strong because those are, that's like when the hardest parts of any kind of temptation starts. Um, but that being said, welcome back to Ask M and this is episode eight. My first question is from Victor Hoffman, Victor Hoffman 21 on Twitter. And he said, ask M, hashtag, what do you recommend for somebody who has been on a high fat diet for a while, but can't seem to digest high fat that well? There's gonna be one person that does really well with 70% fat as their macronutrient. And there's gonna be one person that does well with 40% fat. And so you have to figure out what's gonna work for you. And it really depends on what I've noticed with my clients is if you um, tend to lose weight slowly or you're kind of a slow metabolizer or your body changes very slowly, then you do well with a little bit more carb. If your body is a very fast, adjuster and does really well and responds very well to different changes in your diet and you see weight loss happen fast once you commit to something, then you tend to do well with a little bit more fat. But one thing that you can know for sure is that if you've lived off of no fat, non-fat or low fat, or bad fat, so think about canola oils, margarine, um, you've done non-fat yogurts or low-fat cheese, non-fat milks for a long time, your gallbladder needs good fats in order, in order to properly produce good bile. And bile is that like kind of, I think of it as dish, dish soap in your body that really breaks down and emulsifies fat. So if you have a bad gallbladder or a slow gallbladder or not properly working gallbladder, then when you have a lot of fats and you kind of switch too fast, then it's gonna be pretty bad for your, for your gallbladder and for your digestive system because all these undigested fats are gonna go into your small intestine and sometimes that can cause leaky gut and that can cause a lot of irritability and all these weird digestion issues. So. What do you do if you think you might have a slower gallbladder or you want to eat more good fats, but you don't think you're digesting them all? And what I always love, I try to pick foods naturally. And then if the foods aren't happening, then I go for supplements. And so the foods I love that are really great to help your, ball, your gallbladder are beets and artichoke hearts. Those are really great. You also need the... Um, the vitamin taurine. Taurine is a really great component of making bile. And then you also need to make sure you're getting enough salt in your diet. So this whole no salt in your diet thing is a myth. And so you need to get really good high quality sea salts in your diet, especially if you're exercising more. If you're not able to get enough of those foods in your diet and you're still not digesting fats appropriately, then there's supplement forms of the exact same foods. So it's food-based supplements. And I love the biotics, the beta plus, um, which is great for if you don't have enough bile and you're eating more fats. And then beta TCP from biotics, which is great for if you have 
been eating a lot of bad bio, or not bad bio, you don't want to eat bio. If you, you're eating a lot of bad fats, so you're not used to eating fats at all, no fat, non-fat. Um, and so those are two supplements that I really like for people. And if you don't have a gallbladder, then you need to eat more, as much beets and artichokes as you can, and salt as much as you can, and then kind of be aware that the best fats for you to eat are gonna be the medium chain triglyceride fats, so like coconuts, um, ones that are a little bit easier to digest that actually are digested in your stomach. And so coconut is the best, hands down. Coconut's like my favorite food, I think, because I can, you can have coconut butter, coconut oil, coconut milk. I actually was putting, I was cutting my Christmas tree and I got sap everywhere. And so I couldn't get it off. Everything was sticking. Like it was like stuck to my face and I was like, MK, I'm stuck. And then I put coconut oil on and it was gone. It's like magic what it can do for you. Okay, so that's my question for gallbladder. Woohoo! Okay, next question. Question number two. This is from Narissa. You can zoom in if you want. You want to see Narissa Harman? This is from Narissa Harmon. She said, how to eat good while traveling and staying motivated while on the road. The roads. Okay, so I kind of didn't ask him. I think one or two, but that was before Blake and it was shitty. So the quality of my Ask Him 1s and Ask Him 2s have gone quite the upgrade. Thank you, Blake. So if you didn't watch it, I don't blame you because I couldn't even hear it. So let's just reiterate what I said on the first couple episodes about eating while traveling and eating on the go, especially over the holidays and staying motivated. And so first off, I'm gonna have a Kickstarter launch fingers crossed January 18th and hopefully it is a great tool for you guys while you travel. I actually created it when I was traveling because I was so sick of not having a gym or I was so sick of doing body weight workouts. I just felt like I lost a lot of strength when I was traveling and so I created this product and I'm really excited about it. So this is, it's a one great way to stay motivated while you're traveling because it's a really fun way to stay in shape. But that being aside, I think when you're traveling, the best thing to do is bring as many dry good snacks as you can. So I bring a couple cans of tuna, I bring some almonds, I bring even some beef jerky. Those are the best things while you're in an airport, while you're at gas stations and you're surrounded by all these delicious foods that smell amazing but are horrible for your body. So like corn dogs and pizza, they have this like they just smell so damn good. And that smell is always gonna smell good. So if you go into a gas station hungry and you're irritable because you're traveling and you don't have anything f high protein or quality food with you, then you're gonna probably crash and burn and then it's just gonna start that cycle. So always bring high protein, easy to access snacks. And I think my other trick that I love is bringing herbal teas. And so I used to bring all teas, but now that I'm not having caffeine, I'll just do herbal teas. And it's fantastic because it can help me stay away from a lot of like bad things in the airport if I just kind of sit down and take a few breaths and make some tea. My weakness at the airport is Auntie Anne's and I never actually go but like when I have to smell Auntie Anne's it's like the only time I miss bread. It just smells so freaking good. So try to like stay away from them and try to bring some teas or something that you can do on the plane. Um, just be in the moment and I also bring my oils. So I'm really into Young Living oils, the essential oils that can help with digestion. They can help with just like staying grounded. They can help with clarity, all these different oils that kind of help me stay in my body. And I think that's a big thing when you're in the holiday season and traveling is that you could just get distracted and you're traveling and you just grab for food that is quick and cheap and tastes delicious. And so the more you can just be in the moment and realize like, you know, I, I will regret this decision. I almost lost some decaf. Um, I will regret this decision if I eat this Auntie Anne pretzel. Um, the more you can kind of just take a, a step back and try to relax and do things that you do in your normal life. For me is drink a lot of tea and have some good smelling oils and then always have some snacks on hand. And then that really helps when I travel. Okay, and then the last question is from Blake. Okay, so Blake asked, he's sick of spaghetti squash. And I know there's a lot of Italians out there who love their pasta. There's a lot of people that grew up on pasta. And it's just nice to have a different alternative other than spaghetti squash, because quite frankly, I'm very sick of it too. So there's one tool that I got from Bed Bath & Beyond, and it's like eight bucks. It's called a vegetti. And you hold it and you just put, you can do zucchini and you twist it really fast. And so it's a little thicker than spaghetti squash. And so it's a little bit more pasta-like, but then to get the, to make it really delicious, you actually soak it in salt water. 
and so that makes it a little better. That's still not quite pasta, so I have seen some red lentil pastas, some chickpea pastas, things that are made from beans, and I think that's fantastic, but you still have to look at the macronutrients of it. The carbohydrates are pretty heavy, and so our goal in getting the best, out of, best nutritional value out of our food is really knowing that too much carbohydrate is gonna be stored as fat. And so when we can try to do less carbohydrate and more fats and proteins, then we're gonna have effortless weight loss. And so what, with, what I do with pasta is I just try to do it after maybe a hard workout and that's maybe like, and it's not, it's never actual pasta. It's usually like the red lentil pasta or the alter, pasta alternatives. I stick it in my meals when it's a little bit more of a heavy lifting day. And then I can have um, a little bit more and not feel as bad about it or I don't feel as bad the next day. Sometimes it just makes me feel like crap if I have too much of it. But those are also alternatives that you can use. And it's always better than having, for me, especially I, I just don't do well with gluten, I don't do well with gliadin, and so um, if those are completely out of your diet, I just feel I just feel way better, less bloated, less crabby, you know, like you should never want to take a nap after you eat. That's a bad thing. So if you feel that way, if you eat food and are tired, that's a blood sugar issue. And so um, if that's the case, you should book a Skype with me and we can really talk about nutritional therapy for you. But anyway, um, Lots of different pasta alternatives that are gonna make you feel better, you're gonna save calories. You do still wanna be careful about the carbohydrates, but sometimes carbs are okay. I mean, actually a lot of times carbs are okay. And so especially if you lift a little heavy, have some extra carbohydrates at the end of the day. Um, just make sure you don't overdo it because we wanna stay fat burners, not sugar burners, and that's how we lose weight.